All right, let me let me turn it over to you, Carl. Uh, uh, and, and, and we're going to get into the sort of the heavy topics I, I would like the community to learn about. And I would like to have your input about where do you see, hypothetically, should Trump win the election, what can we expect the type of foreign relations or the bilateral relations <laughs> between the U.S. and China moving forward? Knowing that, here is the thing. Trump already mentioned he's going to put about 60% tariffs on China. For Trump, uh, you know, first of all, the Trump victory is not guaranteed. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. if they had told the election on the day of the failed assassination, Trump would have won. No, no, no question. Um, but because Democratic Party forced Biden to give up his nomination, now it's a little bit different because they're they're now putting Kamala Harris as a candidate. And Kamala Harris, even though she is famous for making vacuous statements. Uh, good afternoon. I want to welcome these leaders for coming in to have this very important discussion um, about some of the most pressing issues of our time. Um, I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman sitting at the table wearing a blue suit. And um, and laughing um, in public. <laughs> but she's, because she hasn't done anything in the last three yeah. years, she's not as visible as Biden. Yeah. So she's not as uh, associated with all the Biden policy, including, you know, the, the full-throated support for Israel. Uh, even though we know Paris policy probably the same as Biden, but at least she wasn't on the forefront. So a, while mm -hmm. a lot of the hate is aiming toward Biden, you know, Biden was called genocide Joe. You know, nobody is calling Harris genocide Harris yet. So, so <laughs> and, and 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 I see what the Democrats are now right right now what they're trying to do. They're trying to also going on attacking uh, offensive against. Trump, but particularly Trump's VP, Trump's uh, uh, vice presidential candidate, J.D. Vance. Mm -hmm. And because J.D. Vance, they dug up an audio clip of J.D. Vance uh, from three years ago, from 2021, when he, he was making disparaging comments about women who didn't have children. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? Which yes. potentially could, you know, turn off a huge segment of the voting population. Now, now you, yeah. you know, if you, uh, you know, a lot of women are saying like they don't agree with Biden, uh, 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 Kamala at all, but because what J.D. Vance said was so off-putting, you know, he would vote vote against the J.D. Vance team. So so at this point, um, I, I don't think the Trump victory is guaranteed because we still have four <laughs> months. And in the U.S. calendar, in the U.S. calendar, the election calendar four months is an eternity anything can happen <laughs> in four that's months true. right i mean i mean there could be another trump assassination you know who knows that's true um, and so but but let's let's say let's say trump do get elected um yeah. from the chinese perspective biden is terrible you know trump was bad but biden is worse because uh, well, trump started the whole uh down spiral of the sino american relationship right, it's yeah. arguing it's even started earlier with under hillary clinton as a secretary of state when she did pivot to asia but um it, it, but biden was i mean trump is when you really took a nose dive but biden took it to the next level by uh wait what by doubling down on trump's uh, uh, sanctions and made it worse, and, and by expanding the sanctions dramatically. So, yeah. in that case, from Chinese perspective, it's not like Biden or Trump uh, or, or Harris or Trump. It, it, it like it doesn't make too much difference. But the, the one big difference is Trump is unpredictable. He's a wild card. 
And mm. he, in that way, he's a destabilizing factor for the U.S. foreign policy establishment. And, 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 and Trump, you know, if you remember, he actually went to met with Kim Jong-un uh, mm. for North Korea. And, and he actually went to China. And so, so there's still a possibility, you know, Trump being who he is, a businessman, might yield to his businessman instinct, <laughs> that is, um, have a transactional foreign policy, that he might make a deal with China. And this is what a lot of the foreign policy elite in the U.S. were afraid of in the first term. They're afraid that Trump is going to make a deal with China yeah, over Taiwan, China. you know, like yeah. over some trade concession or something. And, 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 and I think that fear is still persists among the same yeah. foreign policy elite. Uh, many of them will be out of office, will be out of a job. Um, and the, the, the problem is, you know, we look at first Trump turn. Tr Tr Trump was still surround himself with anti-China hawks and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, thankfully, many of them will not be returning, like John John Bolton, you know, because they have burned their bridges with Trump so much. Uh, we, it, it, I, I will say, what have I think what Chinese government is doing right now? They're adopting a way to see approach. You know, they're yeah. not bothering engaging with Biden at this point because, well, Biden is out anyway. <laughs> and, and, and and but they're they are they're just waiting to see where when the dust settles in the u.s election which is shaping yeah. into a shit show um and they, they're waiting to see who is gonna uh come out ahead and then they'll they, they can make some plans on how to um how to go forward on, on, yeah. on repair the relationship between u.s and china but if you see the you the chinese foreign policy yeah. He actually, there has been dramatic change. Um, you know, one thing is during the Deng Xiaoping era or the Hu Jintao era or the Jiang Zemin era, uh, during that time, China was mostly concentrated on its own internal development. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it tried to have relationship, bilateral, a good bilateral relationship with everybody, including the United States and, and its Western allies. And, and, and because, you know, they just want to do business. Um, but... Yeah. Given the, the 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 environment in the last few years, when U.S. has been increasingly more aggressive, trying to isolate China, trying to contain China, China has foreign policy lately has been a lot more assertive. You know, they and a lot more proactive. They just they first they brokered the Saudi Iran peace deal that kind of throw the U.S. grand strategy Middle East into shambles. You know, because yeah. U.S. strategy was was trying to wedge Saudi Arabia from Iran and get Saudi Arabia and Israel together. And, but after October 7th, that, that's became impossible. You know, no yeah. Arab Changed. state, no Muslim majority state will, will at this point try to normalize ties with Israel. And, and so, so that's, that's, that's one, uh, you know, so, so U S for, uh, and, and, and China just recently hosted, the 14 Palestinian factions, including Hamas and Fatah in Beijing. They issued the Beijing Declaration, uh, a commitment to form a unity Palestine government with a uh, capital in Jerusalem. So this is pretty big. This is uh, yeah. China is going on offensive right now, and, and they Whereas traditionally they usually exercise, they usually abstain from in the UN Security Council. You know they, they rarely cast veto. But starting from uh, Syrian war, that's when China start to use its veto power more and more. I mean, China voted with uh, with Russia to veto like many many UN uh, sanctions against Syria, and, yeah. and 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 China continued to be to be more proactive in the foreign policy arena because they they see that u.s is destroying all the international forum international institutions that u.s once helped build and dominate and so china yeah. is now quietly building out a replacement um and, and so 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 whether trump wins uh you know kamala wins china is doing its own thing china is already preparing the world for the multipolar world in which U U.S. is be incre becoming increasingly 
irrelevant. You know, the U.S. is no longer the the yeah. the high power. Just, yeah. the, the unipolar power moment has has long gone. So I, I you know I I think we'll have to wait and see. I mean, what Trump is do is said he was going to do. I mean, Trump said promised a lot of things. You know, <laughs> first of all, Trump says a lot of things at election. Whether they will become realized and implemented is a whole yeah. is set another story. But even if Trump uh, plays a lot of uh, you know sixty percent tariffs, um, people that's going to hurt is American consumers. Americans. I mean, like yeah, that's true. The, the when everything is made in China, when China is a world's factory, there's a there's a popular um, <coughs> uh, to push for decoupling in Washington in the last few years. You know, the first cut they call it decoupling, they call it de-risking, but the whole idea was to isolate China because they think okay, U.S. and China economy became so intertwined that if ever a conflict uh, becomes a hot conflict. There will yeah. be collateral damage and backlashes <clears throat> on the U.S. economy. So they thought, okay, we'll just be proactive. We cut off the, the ties right now. You know, right now the, the, the two economies are like Siamese twins. We're just gonna take a knife and cut them in the middle. And then that way, when the conflict break out, we don't have to worry about collateral damage. But this is very foolish because um, you know even the U.S. defense industry rely on component source from China. You have. Lockheed Martin CEO coming on and say, well, we can't really decouple 100% from China because we still need components from China. And this is U.S. military industrial complex speaking. Yeah. Um, so they, it's, not, it's not realistic. And it's like, uh, it, it, it's, and, and China is also diversifying its export. Now, now China, trade, uh, China trades more with ASEAN with Southeast Asia, then they trade with the United States. The United and, States and the the China, China's export of mm-hmm. EVs, when they do export, most of the Chinese brand EVs are exported yeah. to the South countries, either Southeast Asia or Latin America, you know, to Brazil and Mexico uh, part in particular. And and they're not coming to US. Of course, one reason is because of the tariff, but yeah. but the, glo- the trade with the global south will become increasingly more important to China. This is why BRICS now is shaping up as a major international institution. Right? BRICS started as an acronym by Goldman Sachs. You know, it's an acronym for, for the stock market. But now it's becoming a real counterbalance to the U.S. hegemony. So we're living interesting times. Indeed.